design, uh, planning, and then the uh, operation. Now, this afternoon, we will look at the strategies. Right? When we say strategies, what do we need by supply chain strategies? So, over the years, supply chain strategy has evolved, and you as a supply chain professional, at least must know what are the strategies when people talk about supply chain strategies so that you are aware and you know how to implement some of those strategies. So let's go back to uh, looking at the, uh, the aim of this uh, session here is to first touch on some of the concepts and strategies and in the, in the meantime, we also revisit the definition of logistics and supply chain. Right, is there a different or they are the same? And then we look at the strategies. As of today, what are the kind of strategies in supply chain management? Right. You may have uh, done something, but you did not know that it's actually one of those strategies. So I will just share with you, just like in Sun Tzu, there are 36 strategies right here. In supply chain, we don't have so many, but these are the classic ones that you at least must know by the end of this class. So, what is the main difference between logistics management and supply chain management? Anybody want to try before we go into the details? What is the difference between logistics management and supply chain management? Anybody want to try? Besides spelling, they are spelled very differently. Yeah. Yeah. What is the key difference between logistic management and supply chain management? Yeah. Anybody want to try? Or are they the same? If they are same, why they use two words? You know? So there must be some differences, right? So what is the difference between logistic and supply chain management? Timing. Timing? This one is the old version. This one is the newer version. It's not my version. Uh -huh. <coughs> uh, I think logistics is more like the routine that you take away the way that is kept for work. My house and my position is different. Uh -huh. My chain is looking into the food chain information. How best I look at logistics as a product chain. Okay, so one of these points is that Logistics is about functions like storage, warehousing, transport, typical kind of functions. Logistics is movement. Logistics is movement. Yeah, for one, one activity, one activity. Okay. Now we have to check the whole process. And then if managing the whole process, it's probably more logistic. So, so. Uh, logistic is movement, whereas supply chain is end-to-end -end process. Okay, any more? Many more, many more differences. Logistic types are the physical activities. Ah, uh -huh. and then supply chain. So like process, activities, process, from everything. So besides physical, what else does supply chain do more? Any more difference between supply chain and logistics management? Very important because as a supply chain professional, <coughs> you must be able to tell people what is so different between you and the traditional logistician. Okay. What are the differences? Solution. Solution? Yeah. Uh, how do you? Uh, logistic, and that's what my experience here with you. lecture that we are talking about introduction to supply chain. Supply chain management involves how many flow? Three flow. Three flow, right? Material flow, information, fund flow, information flow. In logistics management, the entire focus is only material flow. That's what you say, movement of the products. So it doesn't really care about you know, the transport, maybe the uh, financial 
ratio of no left and right ratio. So that is one of the key difference. Right? Another key difference is that supply chain management is a bit more strategic than logistic management. Right? Logistic management focuses more on the operational issues, storage, and transportation, and all these. Whereas the supply chain, look at supply chain design, which warehouse should I have? Which factory should I do? These are very strategic decisions logistic management will do. Right? You ask anybody, they will not tell you okay, which how many warehouse, how many that the supply chain department do that. Right? So they want to look at supply chain configuration. So this is one of the key reasons or key differentiation between supply chain management and logistics management. So let's look at some of the definition of each one of them. So the first one is logistics means part of the supply chain process that plan, implement, and control efficient, effective forward reverse flow of materials and related information from the point of origin to the point of consumption in order to meet customer demand. Right? So again, it is more an operational way of looking at supply chain. Right? So that's about logistics. And this is defined by the Council of Logistics Management in 1998. Whereas in supply chain, it takes a more encompassing role. It is the systemic, systemic in this case, the whole thing is treated as a system. Huh? Strategic coordinations of different functions and tactics across all the different functions within a company, as well as across businesses within the supply chain. That means your supplier and your customer. For the purpose of improving the long-term performance of individual company as well as their supply chain. Now this may be a bit long-winded, but here what I say is that first of all, if you look at the first part here, the first four sentence, it means that within the company, <coughs> they are purchasing finance, distribution, and all these. The supply chain will integrate all these functions together, end to end. And then, besides integrating all this together, they must also be able to integrate with their suppliers, their distributor, and all those. So that becomes the external integration. So there must be internal integration within the company, and then they also must have external integration with their supplier and customers. In order to improve the long-term performance of both the companies and the supply chain. Because today, if you have read some article, you will know that when you compete, it's not between company to company, right now. It's between supply chain versus supply chain. You heard about this? Is which supply chain is more efficient and more responsive, right? Rather than which company is more responsive. You can be very, very responsive, but you don't have a good logistic company that will deliver to you on time, you know? So it's the whole supply chain that is very important. So today when you want to compete, it is how efficient your supply chain is. Not just your company. Your company rely on your supply chain. So if your supply chain is slow in responding, very expensive, you cannot compete. So the bottom line is your supply chain is the main driver of the competition. And in the, uh, in the word logistics also comes from, uh, if you look at the Greek, Greek uh, word, uh, the idea that process should be organized into a uh, hierarchical, logical, and seamless order in order to achieve the optimum results. That is the definition from Greek uh, dictionary, right? So it's about the same, right? Integrating all the different operations together. And you can find that all this Logistics, uh, as what uh, Dr. Ong said, is all in the army, right? Whether it's Napoleon or Alexander the Great, they will look at how many ships you need, how many shoulders you need, you know, 
so many things you need, how much food you need to inside the, uh, the ship and all those things. These are logistics. These are logistics. Now, I think I read a book before, very interesting book, that says how, you know the Egypt, they built the pyramid, right? You know the pyramids from Egyptians? The question that people will ask is that, you know those stones that they used to build the pyramid, one stone is, I don't know how many times, I think maybe it's 10, 15 times. How are they able to carry them? These are all rocks, uh, heavy rocks. How are they able to carry them from another place in Egypt, all the way down to Egypt, and then build them up? It's a logistical issue, you know. How do they move this rock from one end to that place and then build the pyramid? <coughs> and, and actually, they actually found that the reason or how they were doing it is because there was a river last night, river now, and they were able to leverage with, during high tide, they bring the rock to one of the, the small little boat there, put all this rock on the boat and move it down and then after that unload it and then shift it to a place to build the pyramid. And how do they bring it up and higher and higher? Do they have crane at the time, during the Egyptian time? So how do you move the rock up? Again, a logistical issue, right? How do they do that? So you find that whether it's <coughs> army or whether it's construction, logistics play a very right? And from logistics, it evolved into supply chain because logistics is too limited. It only deals with its own company, right? It doesn't deal outside the supply chain. So that's how supply chain can evolve. And, and that's where the word supply uh, system theory can be, right? When we say system theory, we look at things in the system perspective now. So no longer a company is a system, but the suppliers, the customer, the 3 pl they are part of this system. And that's why we treated them as a supply chain system. Eventually, the whole supply chain management may be changed into supply chain system. Eventually, right? It could be that way because everything is integrated. So it's a system whose all the parts include material, production, distribution, and customer all link together and feed forward flow of material and information. Right, so this could eventually be the new definition of supply chain. By, by turning the whole supply chain as a system. Right. So if any part of the system fails, the whole supply chain So your material from your supplier must come on time. If the material doesn't come on time, the system fails. Right. Production. So if you have a lot of uh, defects, again, it's a dropout, then the system fails to deliver to your customer again. The distribution system, the transport, right? If you transport your goods uh, halfway, the routes conditions are very poor, the weather is bad, then the system fails again. Okay? And, and then deliver it to your customer. So the whole, whole idea is that you have to look at this from a system point of view, rather than just thinking about your own company, but you have to look at your supplier, your facilities, the distribution services, and so on. And then the material flow and the information flow. And that becomes the supply chain system. And that's why you find that today, this becomes more and more integrated. Right? And when we say it is a system, we then look at what is in the system. Right. So here we will have a lot of inputs into this transformation process. Right. So this could be your production, manufacturing, warehouse. Right. So all the raw material will go in there and then get transformed and then shipped out. Now traditionally, one of the problems that people complain about supply chain works is that it is linear. You know what's linear? That means to say that a if this is your company, right? The suppliers, there's only one supplier, and then go to one customer. So this is called a linear supply chain. But in real life, 
do you have a linear supply chain? You will never have a linear supply chain, right? In real life, you will have many, many suppliers. You will have many, many customers. <coughs> so it will be more like a supply web. Because it is not linear. If it is linear, then it is not realistic. Right? You don't buy from one supplier and you don't sell to one customer. So the whole idea is that the transformation uh, comes from many different inputs. And then when you get out from that process, the whole supply chain process, you will go out to multiple output as well. Right? So this is exactly how the real world will look like eventually. Now, we look at Forrester effect. Now, this is the first concept in supply chain strategy. Right? Forrester effect comes from a professor called J. Forrester, MIT. And J. Forrester in 1961 discovered something very interesting. So, we look at the uh, supply chain, right, which consists of uh, four different players. The factory produce, send to the distributor, the distributor send to the wholesaler, and then the wholesaler send to the retailer, and then the consumer buy. So when you look at this whole supply chain, you look at the raw material, which is the material flow, going into the factory, and then um, when somebody buys from the retailer, the material gets pulled into the various part of the supply chain. Right? As the moment I buy something from the retailer, then they will order. Right? So material gets pulled inside here. At the same time, the information, the point of sales information, get uh, get updated here and then from here the wholesaler will then place an order to the distributor then the distributor will place an order to the factory okay. so the amount of quantity increases as you go upstream right now because uh, first you buy one piece then the retailer they, they, they cannot buy one piece from the wholesaler, they must buy at least a dozen or a carton, right? So they buy a carton. And then the wholesaler will buy from the distributor at least one container sometime. So they will buy one container from the distributor. The distributor cannot order one container from the factory, they must order a few containers. So they will then buy more.